Broke the howl, broke the hour shy, broke the howl, broke the hour shy, broke the howl, broke the howl, but she may have shy, but Hashem, Makaku Dutch. Double honest to the blindness of the apostles and the elders of Great Bill, so much you well. I want to say salutations to the whole flock out there. You are to the document that do this thing in the most truth and sincerity. On the preacher mind, this week's topic is going to be entitled Watch and Observe, or maybe Watch, Observe, Report. The primary point I want to hit is just that the prof the, the prophets, you know, our job primarily is we do a lot of watching, watching, and observation. Um, you know, the apostles always told us this, and it, it just makes sense, you know, the more you stay in the truth, you learn a lot more from just observing and watching. And the inspiration for the show comes from the fact that, you know, recently did a response to Nate, um, Bishop Nathaniel's... Uh, Yahweh Shai and Jesus lesson he did in the video if you watch it you know as as he's speaking you see in them travel you see in them do community service they're talking about buildings and all these types of stuff when really you know the, the role of the prophet is not to do that the role of the prophet is really just to observe to watch what's going on in society link it to the prophets and speak on it you know it's, it's really that simple because this is just a temporary stay here in America you know this is not a a long-term um place that we micah 2 and 10 this is not our rest you know so we should never and the scriptures speak about being pilgrim in those days so this is not our our long-term rest our, our primary job is to be like as you can see above the owl and one observation i made about owls is that for the most part they're nocturnal meaning they do a lot of seeing in the dark i mean they're awake during the dark and we're in the darkness right now and we like the owl <clears throat> which is often associated with wisdom um we we see during the night through these scriptures and we're gonna we're gonna hit a few um scriptures that um highlight what i just said luke 21 and 36 watch ye therefore and pray always and the scriptures say pray without ceasing now what what should you be praying for should it be materialistic things should it be things that's gonna vanish things that are incorruptible no you should be praying for the coming of the lord and things to build up you, your spirit and your mind. You know, spiritual gifts. Which cannot be corrupted. Hey, look at King Solomon. Primary example, he had to pray. He prayed for wisdom and everything else came. That ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. And what are some of the things that are going to come to pass according to the Bible? Very harsh times. Evil times. Eve meaning bad. Eve meaning time. Ill meaning bad. Famines, race riots, cannibalism, I mean, all out pandemonium. So you're gonna have, you're gonna have to have a strong mind to deal with the things that are coming ahead. And the most side is gonna have to give you that mind and faith and per, uh, perseverance. And that's what, that's what this whole waiting game is about. When we're sitting and patiently waiting, um, patient means to suffer. And observing these things, our mind each day is slowly being getting built for that day of wrath. That when it comes, we're prepared for it. You know, just like how you practice for a game or rehearse for a play. You do it over and over really so much that when the actual thing comes, it's not that intense for you. This one dude at Alabama said the hardest part about when he went to Alabama and played football was the practice. That when you finally, the practice was so intense that you couldn't wait for the game. So that says a lot. And to stand before the Son of Man. The Son of a Man, name is Yahweh Shai. And I have to push that vibration because if I said the name Jesus, for the most part, anybody come across this video, they're going to think of a white man with long hair. Because that name brings up a certain spirit. When I say the name Yahweh Shai, you think of a dark skinned black man with white woolly hair. As it says in the book of Revelations, the first chapter, the 13th verse, to the 15th verse. Yeah, so the primary part is we do a lot more watching and observing, you know, and then reporting on these prophecies. You learn a lot, man, just because when you're talking, you know, it, it, you might not think it light, but it does take away from other senses. You know, if I'm speaking right now, I'm not hearing as well. I'm not listening as, as well, you know, just like when you watch um, uh, like Daredevil, how he lost his sight. 
and he could hear better or you know these different um scenarios where certain so, so somebody lose a particular sense and it heightens the other sense well to heighten the sense of listening or uh, listening and observing and watching you know you do less talking you know and you can never learn enough man hey two years instead of one mouth right Isaiah 60 and 2 for behold the darkness shall cover the earth Oh, let me start at one. Isaiah sixteen one. Arise, shine, for the for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord Yahweh Bashim is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and sin has covered this place, man. You know, all types of falsehoods, all types of different philosophies, all types of madness has covered this planet Earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord Yahweh by Shemir Shah shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. The scripture says, I will set lights, candles in Jerusalem. Now, who are the candles? Well, Matthew the fifth chapter says, Ye are the light of the world. You know, so we see through the darkness of this world. We observe things. When somebody's, prime example, the whole COVID scenario, right? So through that, to the spirit that look this thing is not what this the media is making it seem because that's a that's a that's the main way the so-called white man puts a veil over the world and it's through propaganda through lies so you have to have the ability to see through lies and how do you disseminate lies with the truth and the truth is found in the bible revelation chapter 3 verse 18 i counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire now that gold that's tried in the fire is not talking about actual gold because the church of Lacedonia, Laodicea was known for their gold but Yahweh Shai is using like an analogy to the gold that they have to men let me go ahead and prove that let me go ahead and prove that instead of quoting it the spirit is saying bring it out so I'll go ahead and bring it out Ecclesiasticus 2 and 1. My son, if thou comest to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure. Yeah, make yourself hard. Constantly. Because you're going to constantly be tried. With different temptations through your daily lives. The ultimate temptation is going to be the RFID microchip. And make not haste in time of trouble. And many have done that. You know, when hell come upon them, the fire come upon them, as Yahweh Shai says, when the heat beat upon that 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 uh that seed that was planted, it burns up. This thing is gonna come with trials and tribulation. It's not gonna be a merry old happy time. Cleave onto him and depart not away. So the more hell you catch, the more you should be cleaving onto the heavenly father. Look at that. That thou mayest be increased at thy last. Yes, because th this is how um, experience is built to be tried out. The more you're tried through adversity, the more you're able to deal with it. You know? What does the scripture say? Um, take away the dross from the silver and they shall come for the vessel for the finer. How do you take away dross from silver? Through fire. So we have to be those precious metals. Silver, gold, brass, and not like wood, hay, and stubble, who do the opposite when fire is put upon it. Eventually, they burn to nothing. We should embrace the fire. And Yahweh Shai told us, I'm not come to baptize you with water, but with fire. Zechariah 13 also speaks about that. Zechariah 13 and 8 to 9 speaks about bringing the one-third through the fire, going into the nuclear missiles and also the trials and tribulations that, that the scriptures are speaking about here. Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. And that's easier said than done, but after a while, it does become a bit easier to do. I'm not going to lie, you know? Because, you know, anytime you catch in hell, one thing about catching hell, it always makes you want this place to end faster. You know? That's how come it's not really good to be at ease and be comfortable, you know? When you catch in hell and all things are not going your way it just is like damn lord can you just come back already you know and then when things are going good for most individuals they tend to put the lord in the back of their mind because they're comfortable and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state so suffer when you're in the lower state the most is going to do both the most is not going to just have you come in this thing and just catch hell 24 7 
there's a balance to everything, man, you know? But in all things, as the scripture says in Ecclesiastes, consider, you know, the prosperity and the adversity of the Lord. Here we go. This is the point. Verse 5, for gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So in Revelations 3 and 18, when it says the gold, it's talking about the acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So let's read it again now with an understanding on that. Revelations 3 and 18, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. So that's the acceptable men. That thou mayest be rich. And actual gold will make you physically rich. But the scriptures also speak about spiritual riches. In fact, spiritual riches are above um, tangible riches. I want to see something real quick in the TSK. If they have anything on rich. I was looking for one in Proverbs, maybe. So, let me see. Let's use one of these precepts. 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. For ye know the grace of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, that thou was rich, that no, th th that thou he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Yeah. All right. So we became rich through um, Yahweh Shai's. Uh, again, that's talking about spiritual riches. I was looking at something more lines of Proverbs. Oh, here we go. This is awesome. James 2 and 5. Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not the Most High chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith? Exactly. So that's the riches I'm looking for right there. Faith. You know? And is of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him. Second Tim 1 Timothy 6 and 18. That, that they do good, that they be rich in good works. Ready to distribute, willing to communicate. So you can be rich in good works and rich in faith, you know? So we know that the goal that is speaking about in the first verse is talking about acceptable men, that thou mayest be rich what in faith and in acceptable works, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed. And the scriptures speak about white represents purity, and the raiment means a proper doctrine, right? Because the book of Zephaniah speaks about those that have straight apparel. All right, a, a, a philosophy or a garment, a philosophy or a garment that is not associated with this Bible. Strange apparel will be something like being a Muslim or being in the false sense of Christianity, right? Thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, which nakedness is synonymous with sin. When you hear about the Garden of Eden, that's not talking about true naked as in no clothes. Literally, but the, this is the Bible. The Bible is full of allegories and metaphors, and it's really precept upon precept. And the Most High opening their eyes to it, Romans three and seven, the prophets, to understand what this, these scriptures are talking about. You know, and anoint thine eye with eye salve that thou mayest see. Exactly. So the eye salve that we have is the is the truth. And going back to the owl above, the, what makes them see in the dark. Is they have a special oil in the back of their eye that allows them to see, and they pretty much have, like you know, let's look at let's look at it. Let's, let's, like King Solomon said, observe the ant and be wise. Let's observe the owl. It sees at night. It could see almost 360, because it could turn its head, damn near almost 360. And it has an special oil to see at night. The Mosai built that creature to let us learn a lot, man. That's a lot going on there from an allegory standpoint man and you can see why it's synonymous with wisdom heck uh esau knows that and that's how come they worship which you're not supposed to worship no animal but they know it you know they'll have these type of wis uh animals associated with wisdom owls and dragons and these things because of their characteristics so the, the ability to have to turn your head 360 because the scriptures speak about being circumspect which literally means to look around right and the ability to see in the dark you know These types of things are synonymous with the scriptures. Because we're constantly doing more, looking around and observing. Because you look at an owl, right? <clears throat> at night, it's not really like um, 
it's not very it's, it's just it just sits there for the most part it hunts but it's sitting there and it's just watching you know and that's how we ought to be in the darkness you know we watching we watching we watching what Esau's doing watching what everybody's doing we observing and then we're, we're giving the proper inter interpretation to the flock daily you know because when you come to Great Millstone there's videos being put up 24-7 literally man in one time zone or the next so one brother's day you know I mean, it's, it's three shows a week minimum, but, you know, that doesn't mean another brother's not going to throw a lesson up on this channel or whatever channel you're watching this on. First Peter's 4 and 7. But the end of all things is at hand. It's been the end of all things since Yahweh shot stepped foot on the earth. That's in the book of Hebrews, the first chapter. We're in the last days. Be therefore sober. I mean, they're not drunk with other philosophies, other ways of life. And watch unto prayer. So that's what we're doing, man. This is why you don't see us out there protesting Black Lives Matters and getting involved with the community and all this other shit that these other doing gospel singings and all these things that these other guys push. Because that's not our role. The role, our role really is to watch, be watchers, observe. And report on the situation. We really waiting on the Lord before we get let loose and take things to the next level. Till then, we're gonna remain spiritual. With that, I'm gonna give all praises to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakodash, the blinds to the apostles and the elders of Great Muslim which you well, and salutations to the hopeful elect out there. You Akim to Zadakim that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. Shalom.